guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. Today we're going to bring you just a basic cleaning video for this very cool, uh, very old Smith & Wesson 357 six-shot revolver with a four-inch barrel. Uh, this firearm is on loan to me from the owner of SS Pawn. Uh, his name is Stan. Stan's got quite a few firearms in his private collection that he loans me for the videos and we take them out and shoot them and usually show you how to clean them and talk about them and so on and it's great to have his support. He's been a longtime supporter of the channel. Uh, go ahead and give SS Pawn a call if you get a chance. It's 308-746-7700 uh, and they will take care of your firearms needs. Uh, I really can't tell you what this model is necessarily. Um, there's not a lot of markings on it, but I can talk about some of the numbers, the serial numbers and markings and so on that we find on the inside of the cylinder here. And so we'll talk about that in just a second when we get there. Think of this as almost as just a basic cleaning video. It's kind of fun just to check out these older revolvers and look at them and see what they have to offer you. A lot of value in them these days. And so basic cleaning supplies. Well, what are we going to need for this? I've just got a, just a simple cleaning rod with a handle on it. Okay. Uh, a couple bore brushes. I think these are 9mm, but you can use them for different calibers. All right, we've just got your basic bulk patches to clean out the barrel and the inside of the cylinder. Okay, we've got just a few cut up t-shirts. I usually use those for, you know, just in place of the patches because they tend to be a lot cheaper. We've got a nice little 357 bore brush, 357 caliber bore brush. All right, and you also have a, a soft brass bristle brush, which will come in really handy for the front of the cylinder where you start to get some powder residue. And this thing really does need a nice cleaning. Uh, some CLP that we'll use to break down some of the carbon, although for just more of a preservative and a protectant, we're going to be using uh, REM oil, okay? So essentially, that's what we're going to be looking at for this, uh, this simple cleaning. So if you've never cleaned a revolver before, if you're maybe you're new to the firearms world or you just like to watch gun videos, uh, you'll probably enjoy this one. And uh, without further ado, we will go ahead and get started. Now guys, I'm going to be the first to admit this. I am more or less a uh, revolver noob. So if I refer to any of these parts incorrectly, uh, let me know. I think I've owned two revolvers in my lifetime and it was for relatively short periods of time. And so one of the first things you want to do, and just because we may have a beginner watching this video, although I try not to make a big deal out of this, just check and make sure that the firearm is unloaded. Okay, we're good to go. Uh, now the first thing I like to do is just kind of a, a general, just kind of a wipe down uh, with some REM oil. So I'll go ahead and spray a little bit of REM oil on a towel or a cut up uh, t-shirt, whatever you want to use. And we just use this just kind of as an initial, just kind of cleaning. This will start to get the oils on the gun and begin to break down some of the carbon and kind of gives you an idea as to how, how filthy the gun really may be. Um, and like I said, there's on the internals of this firearm, there's definitely some, some clean that we need, but it's really not, it's not too bad. Um, you know, we've cleaned some revolvers before on this channel and it, it's a pretty simple process. It's a great uh, first firearm if you don't have one. It's always nice to look into a revolver just for the uh, simplicity of use and so on and, and the ease of maintenance that comes along with it. Okay. Go ahead and check out the hammer on the inside. Kind of wipe that off a little bit. Although we're going to get into this with just a, you know, a little more detail here in just a little bit. So again, uh, we'll be taking this one out to the range to see how well it performs. Um, I haven't had the best luck shooting revolvers, to be honest with you. I mean, I really do enjoy them, but it's not something I grew up with. I uh, grew up with basically uh, semi-autos in the family and so on. Okay, so we got that part all taken care of. Uh, the next thing we want to do is what I call uh, marinating the barrel. We're going to take a little bit of uh, CLP here and just go ahead and shoot it down the barrel. Now, this will foam up, so you don't want to overdo it because then it'll just run all over the place. But let that kind of run down the barrel while we do some of the work in the cylinder. And basically that's going to start to break down a lot of your carbon deposits and you really don't need a barrel light for something like this to check the barrel and check the bore. Um, as soon as you get done cleaning it to see how shiny it is, but it is always kind of nice to check it when you get done, just make sure there's nothing there. And you know, we start to see a little bit of carbon and stuff built up inside the uh, inside part of, of, you know, right behind the barrel and uh, around the cylinder area. So we want to get that all taken care of. Okay. So while that's uh, sitting and, and uh, just kind of absorbing into the barrel, we're going to go ahead and move on to the uh, cylinders. Well, not the cylinders, I'm sorry. Uh, the inside of the cylinder where you place your ammunition. Okay, uh, moving on guys, we want to go ahead and just put a little bit of CLP in each of these. Okay, just kind of let that get a chance to kind of soak in a little bit. All right, no problems there. Okay, then go ahead and take your 357 mag um, soft bore brush, okay, and just make sure it's on a you know a nice solid single handle and rod, and just go ahead and kind of give a little little bit of a scrub in each one of those cylinders. 
and you'll start to break up the carbon that's in there, you know. Depending on how much the gun's been cleaned before you, it may, need, it may need a lot of scrubbing, may not. I can already see how I'm already starting to work some of those deposits out of the gun. You really start to get a buildup towards the front. And for that, we're going to use a little bit, uh, we'll use a little bit different process to clean it up. So, okay, that's not bad. Okay. Okay, so that's all taken care of. And we'll run patches through and get that all taken care of in just a minute. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the uh, barrel up next here. Okay, we're going to back the camera up just a little bit for this process, just so I have a little bit of room to work. So again, using that uh, bore brush that we talked about before, just go ahead and go through the front of the barrel and just slowly go. You can push on the back of the handle if you want to, and the brush may catch some of the rifling inside the barrel, and you may notice the rod twist, and that's fine. It's no big deal. Okay, we're going to run that in there a couple times. Now, you may have to do this repeatedly if you've got a really dirty barrel, but we'll do just a basic cleaning, and then we will check and see um, how the barrel looks after we finish up uh, getting it all cleaned up, okay? All right, not a problem. Okay, now let's go ahead and move back to the cylinder, and we'll go ahead and get these all cleaned out. Okay guys, so now what you want to do is just go ahead and take a, if you have another, you can use the same cleaning rod I talked about before. I just use this plastic cleaning rod because it works really well and it's simple to do. I've got some double uh, pre-cut patches here that I use. We're just going to run dry patches through each one of these. And you're going to start to see some of that, pow that burn powder start to come out. And the cylinder might move a little bit and that's okay, it's not a big deal. Okay, you could probably get by with just one. I wanted a little more scrubbing power here so that's why I went ahead and took two. Push the rod all the way through until the patches come out. You can really see the, the fine craftsmanship in an older pistol like this. It really is a cool piece to have in the collection. And uh, we'll see how well I can actually shoot it because we're going to be taking this one out to the range. Okay, now this is still fairly dirty. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some CLP soaked patches and we're going to go ahead and repeat the process. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move on to that next step. Okay, now if this seems a little awkward for me, um, it's mainly just because of the way I got the grip on here and the camera angle and so on. But again, if we just keep going through this a few times, we'll get through all of them eventually. Okay, remember the key when you clean your gun, you don't need a rush. Okay, so this be something that you can kind of use to relax to. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of a way to calm down and focus on something. Uh, end of a long day, it's always kind of nice to kind of come home, especially after a range trip and just spend some time getting your gun all cleaned up so you got it ready for the next range trip or whatever you may need to do, right? Okay, so that's not bad. Okay, we got those all cleaned out. Okay, let's take a look at them. No, oh, they're not bad. They're not bad. Um, I'm going to hit these with the brush one more time, and I'm going to hit them with some more CLP patches one more time. Okay, I'm not going to show that on camera, just in order to save you guys viewing time for this, and then we will go back to the barrel in just a sec. So again, now one thing you may notice is that that 357 bore brush, um, you know, it's got there's a lot of space in between the brush and where your shells are going to go. Um, you know, you can just put this in there a little bit and just kind of run it through and kind of brush it out a little bit like you're cleaning out a pipe or something. And, uh, you know, get that all broken up. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and run those patches through and I'm just going to save you guys the, uh, the wait time of having to watch that and we will continue to the barrel. Okay guys, moving on here. Um, we're just going to go ahead and make sure that the cylinder is down. And go ahead and take any cleaning rod you want to. I'm just going to do a single patch on it. Now, this is a dry patch. We're just going to run this through, kind of give us an idea as to what the uh, condition of the barrel is. It's not bad. It's not bad. It might have been shot a few times before it had been cleaned last time. So go ahead and run that patch through a couple times. Again, revolvers, very easy way to get into firearms and to learn how to clean a firearm, especially if you're intimidated at all by any kind of uh, disassembly and so on. It's really not that hard to do, guys. Very simple stuff. Um, okay, now I'm just gonna hit a little bit of uh, CLP on this patch. Okay, now remember, you don't need to leave these guns extra oily. You know, just a thin protective coat is gonna be fine. I know on some parts of my firearms, I like to use a little more oil, just because you have a lot of metal on metal contact, like my AR-15, or sometimes I use oil or grease on my AK-47. All right, so we'll go ahead and just run that patch through a couple times, get that cleaned out. Okay, not bad. I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at the bore here, see how cleaned out it is. So you can get that focus for you there. It's a little hard to see down there, but... Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and check it out. Hold it up to the light. Not bad, not bad, it does look really good. So I think we're okay there. All right, now we're gonna do a little bit of cleaning on the front of the cylinder. You can see we've got some carbon buildup here. 
and uh, it's kind of starting to come off because it's had a little bit of gun oil soaking on it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just take a patch, okay, a little CLP on that, and just go ahead and wipe down the, uh, the front of the cylinder, okay. And as that soaks in, it's really going to start breaking up. I think there's a company, I can't think of what it was, I swear to God I saw it in a Yankee Marshall video. Um, and there's a tool that they, I think it was a tool possibly that you can use to clean the front of the cylinder. And uh, it makes it a lot easier for you getting those carbon deposits off because you really start to get a buildup here. But I prefer using CLP for this kind of a process. Okay. Now take your bore brush, okay, and just kind of gently go across the front of it. Make sure you've got a soft uh, brass bristle brush when you do this. Just kind of go over it. This thing is so useful. I use it on all types of firearms. I use it on the bolt carrier group of the AR-15. Sometimes use it to uh, scrub off heavy deposits on the uh, piston of the AK-47. So again, it's, it's very nice to have. Okay, and make sure you kind of pull down a little bit so any particles and gunk are going to go towards the uh, bottom of the towel. Let's kind of hit it a couple times. Okay, uh, go ahead and give it another wipe off. You might start to notice some stuff coming off now. See, now we've actually got some deposits making their way off there, which is good to know. Good to see. And you may have to do this a few times, you know, there's a chance that it's not going to come off the very first time. So not a bad idea to kind of just keep that in mind. Well, let's take a look at it. Okay, we still have some fussy deposits on here. So I'm going to go and hit that maybe one or two more times. And I'm not going to do it on camera again, just in the uh, interest of time. So I'll do that. Put a little bit of CLP on a patch, wipe it down, scrub it a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and move to the, uh, the inside of the firearm, okay? Okay, now the next step in the process is just go and get yourself a couple patches with some uh, CLP on them and go ahead and, you know, obviously make sure your cylinder's down and go ahead and push back right here and just go ahead and wipe off any deposits that you find behind the extractor, I guess you could say. Like I said, I'm not a, a genius with revolver parts. You're also going to find a lot of buildup back here too. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's a little dirty and you might notice some more back here. You can wipe this down with a, with a damp, well, like an oil-soaked uh, patch to really get in there and start to break up those deposits and so on. Always nice to keep that nice and clean. Okay, so I will continue. I'm gonna go ahead and work on this just for a few minutes, all right? And then we'll go ahead and move to the uh, inside of the action and where the, well, not the action, but the inside of the firearm. Okay, moving right on here, just go ahead and take a uh, CLP uh, soaked patch and just go ahead and wipe off the rear of the cylinder and you, you might start to notice a little bit of carbon coming off. Now this is the second time I've already done this part in this process, so I don't have a whole lot coming off there. It's fairly clean, so I think we're probably good to go. Okay, now what we want to do is go ahead and wipe down the rear of the barrel because you're going to start to get some buildup in here. Uh, you can, you know, hit that with the, with the brush if you want to. Make sure you've gotten a little bit of, you know, a little bit of oil on it. Okay, kind of rub that on the barrel. We're going to get this all wiped off here in just a minute, so you don't have to worry about making a mess, guys. It's part of the fun. And I can see I'm already starting to take some of that carbon off that's built up on there. And then just make sure that you wipe this off. Now, you do want to make sure you go through the barrel one more time and get any little particles that might have fallen into the barrel out of there so there's nothing that's going to cause any issues. Looks like we got a little bit of uh, some build up here, too. Again, uh, it, it might have been a while since this firearm's been cleaned off, and so it could take a little bit of effort and some, some time and a little TLC to get this gun cleaned out. Okay, now we're just going to go ahead and clean out the inside where your cylinder rests. This part will be fairly dirty if you take the gun to the range. That's, that's normal, okay? So just so you can kind of expect that. I want to make sure that there's no buildup and powder and so on. And again, with this gun having, I don't know if this is a stainless steel or a nickel finish, um, oh, by the way, the model, yeah, it says C26 right here, and it has a production number in it, which I'm not going to read just for the privacy of the video, but yeah, C26, so I don't know if that means it's a Smith & Wesson 26 or if there's another type of name for it. Um, you guys probably recognize it. If you know what this gun is, please chime in and let me know. Um, Stan was pretty busy at the shop uh, <clears throat> when I picked it up from him, and so... I did not really get a chance to ask him specifically what the model was, okay? All right, so now what we're gonna do is just go ahead and run a patch through the barrel one more time, just in case there's anything in there. We got one, little, one more little part that we wanna check out. Now you definitely wanna to refer to your manual, you know, when it comes to proper uh, lubrication and oiling, there's probably gonna be a few points that might need some heavier oil. 
So it's not a big deal, um, but you always want to make sure that you maintain the firearm as good as you possibly can. Okay, let's go through the barrel a couple more times. Now the nice thing about this is I'm putting all this CLP on it and, and rubbing it, you know, getting it all wiped off and stuff. And it'll definitely assist with the next time we come back from the range. A lot of that powder and particles and crud that got, that will get on there from the next range trip is going to come right off. So I've noticed that the more you clean the gun, the better you clean it, the easier it is every time you take it back out to the range because you've kind of got that protective layer of oil on there that uh, really does help out to keep it, make it easier for you to clean the next time you get back. I'm kind of flossing up above the barrel, by the way. You'd be surprised that you can get a little bit of a uh, buildup up there too. So, all right, not bad. We'll go ahead and close it up. Now for the hammer, what I like to do is just take a little bit of rem oil. Okay, just go ahead and get yourself a Q-tip. Okay, spray it off. And with the hammer back, just go ahead and wipe out the inside. Just kind of catch that a little bit. You know, obviously you want to be kind of careful. You don't want to get too much oil down there, but you know, you might have a little bit of dirt that's down there that needs it. Don't overdo it because then you're gonna have chunks of your uh, Q-tip that are gonna start coming off. Really, this one's in is pretty good shape, guys. I don't think I need a whole lot of cleaning and detail around the hammer area, okay? Obviously you don't generally get a lot of powder around this part. But again, this 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 uh, pistol seen a little bit of uh, shooting. It's seen a little bit of love in its time, which is fine. It's a gun that's best to be used because again, firearms are tools. So okay, go ahead and wipe off the hammer. Okay, and also the little pin, a little firing pin. Again, I'm sure I'm butchering the names of all these parts. I probably should have did some studying on these parts before I did this video. But again, love to shoot. Don't mind cleaning the guns. Just don't always know. Just don't always know the uh, terminology. So there we go, guys. All right, now I'm just going to give this just a general wipe down on the outside with some rem oil, and uh, we are basically good to go. I cannot wait to take this to the range, test it out. I'm going to shoot some 38 special through it and also some 357. If you guys can recommend a good, just inexpensive target load in 357 Magnum, please chime in in this video and let me know. Uh, I Like I said, I am a revolver noob, and so if I don't know what ammo to fire through the gun uh, before I take it out to the range, I usually just buy like a box of critical defense and keep it in there until I can get to the range. But for this, I'll just be buying some regular full metal jacket ammo to fire with it. So any suggestions you can make will be uh, highly appreciated, guys. And yeah, just kind of as a heads up, I get most of my ammo at Walmart. So if you can think of something that, that they carry at Walmart and you can recommend it, let me know. You know, maybe there's like a perfect around that you like to use. Or maybe there's some ZQ, uh, ZQI, ZQ1 still floating around. I don't even know if they make 38 Special or 357. But um, anyway, so there you have it, guys. Smith & Wesson 357 revolver with a 4-inch barrel. Um, basically clean. Okay, and I know there's a few little extra steps you might take when you clean your revolvers. Please chime in and let me know. But uh, beautiful firearm. I mean, I'm just kind of starting to have a bit of a... I'm really starting to like these revolvers again. I mean, considering I've only had a few, but they are just fun to shoot when you take them out. Although, I have probably the least amount of shooting experience with revolvers in general. Um, but I do, they're, they're great. They're very cool. Very cool. And I cannot wait to get this one out. So again, Stan, thank you from SS Pawn. Guys, give him a call. All right. And again, I'm not getting paid to do these uh, videos. So Stan loans me the gun. I clean it. I shoot it. I mention his store. I bring it back. The nice thing about these videos is whether I like the gun or not, Stan's basically indifferent. He doesn't care what I say about the firearm. Um, and, you know, if I have trouble shooting it or if it's inaccurate, if there's a problem, you guys see it on video. So there you go. All right. So I want to thank you guys for joining in today. Thank you for watching. Uh, please check out the channel. Um, please like or subscribe. And you can follow me over on Facebook with the channel is uh, Travis P11, I believe. I just got that Facebook page up and running a little while ago. Um, we are on Instagram with uh, Travis P11 on YT. We're over on Twitter with uh, at Travis P11 on YT. You guys can check me out on a lot of the podcasts. Oh, you can find me over on gunchannels.com with the Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel backslash Travis P11. Got to promote the channel, guys. It's great having all the viewers and the subscribers. And uh, we're going to probably do a range trip tomorrow. I think I'm going to try to get one in here uh, before the weekend. So as you know, my range is only about 15 minutes from my house. So I try to get out there as much as I can. That's the uh, Rob Jeffrey firing range. But... Uh, we'll probably take a, a rifle out. I think I'm going to take the Mosin out, take the lead sled with me so that we can uh, see how much better I can shoot with it on a lead sled if, if possible. Um, I'm really starting to like that. It takes a lot of the recoil out, so it makes extended range trips a blast. But anyway, back to the pistol, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out the video. Again, if you can help me identify this model, I'd appreciate it. I'm, some, I'm sure some of you guys are just absolute revolver experts. And uh, yeah, so there you have it. All right. So thanks for watching. I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as always, we will talk to you soon. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.